We're going to spend plenty of time today talking about Dak Prescott and Kyler Murray because there's some, some dumb ideas out there, at least a dumb idea. Before we get into it, I want to hear from you guys who you think right now is the better QB, not who's the quarterback of your favorite team, not who you think is going to be better in two or three or four years. Right this second, pick one of these guys for a game right now. Who is it? Type KM for Kyler Murray, DP for Dak Prescott. This will be the pinned comment on today's video, so head down right there and type your votes in. Welcome into the Cowboys Report by Chat Sports. I am Tom Downey. Let's get into this Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott thing that has popped up thanks to an article from AZ Central, producer Jack's boys, trading Kyler Murray for Dak Prescott. To be clear, not happening. Absolutely fake news and a failure by a major publication to do basic research on this. Now, the... the the, the reasoning is, well, Kyler Murray scrubbed his social media. He's from Dallas, blah, 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 wants to get paid, et cetera, et cetera. The issue is, as we'll get into, this actually makes negative sense for the Dallas Cowboys. That sounds weird. It's, it's the truth. The Dallas Cowboys are not, should not, and cannot trade away Dak Prescott. If they were to do so for the draft right now, whenever. Trading Dak Prescott away pre-draft results in a $57.8 million cap hit this year. That is not a, ca a cap hit that they would ever willingly take. So to be clear, suggesting to trade Dak Prescott is dumb. It is stupid and you are wrong, AZ Central, for suggesting it. Now on the flip side, it does at least make sense from a money standpoint for Air, for the Arizona Cardinals. So it's never going to happen. So I want to spend more time today talking about if we pretend it was hypothetically possible, straight up, who would actually win the trade? Both these QBs, to be clear, are franchise guys. I, I'm not advocating this as anti-Kyler Murray propaganda or anything along those lines. If I were Arizona, I would simply pay Kyler Murray whatever he wants. Let's compare these two QBs. This past year, the completion percentage, very similar. Slight advantage to Kyler Murray. The passing yards, advantage Dak, although Murray did miss an extra, I think it was two games compared to Dak. Rushing yards, they definitely favor Kyler. We know how dynamic he is on the ground. Total touchdowns, favor Dak. That includes rushing there. Does not include playoff stats. I'll get to that in a little bit. Turnovers, favor Kyler. I will make note, both of these two, Troublingly, were among the NFL's leaders in fumbles. However, Kyler, who had 13 fumbles, didn't lose any of them. A statistical anomaly that's a partial credit to Kyler, but also not sustainable long term. Let's look at advanced stats here, because I believe in being a nerd. Uh, X comp, that is complete percentage over expectation, favors Kyler Murray. Adjusted yards per attempt, slightly in favor of Dak. Adjusted EPA per play, that's expected points added, slightly in favor of Dak. Success rate, slightly in favor of Dak as well. QBR, a bit more in favor of Kyler Murray. Very similar numbers here. And I will make note that, not to make excuses, but I want to get the full picture here. Uh, the, both of them were top five in expected completion percentage there. Really good stats, nearly the same uh, average depth of targets. Dak was actually more aggressive relative to the first down marker, which I think is noteworthy there. I'll also make note that there were a couple big negative plays that really brought down the EPA and QBR for Dak. Those goal line sneaks he did not score on, major negatives. If we want to look at passing EPA, it's actually a huge advantage in favor of Prescott. But that's the point of adding the, the rushing information, right? Because that's something Kyler is so great at. 2021, then. The slumps, because you're like, oh, Dak played bad down the stretch, and he wasn't the same. Kyler Murray, let's call it what it was, he was bad down the stretch. There's no way around. He did not fare well whatsoever. And frankly, he was he had the worst playoff game I've seen out of a quarterback in a long time. Not all his fault was with it without DeAndre Hopkins, but we heard arguments that were anti-Dak with Neff Cooper. So in the end, what I'm saying is this. Both these QBs are franchise guys. If you're, a, if you're a Cowboys fan, you should feel great about having Dak Prescott. If you're a Cardinals fan, you should just want to pay Kyler Murray. 
Right this second, though, I think I'd actually argue it's Dak, who's a little bit better than Kyler, but you're talking, you know, number eight QB versus number nine or whatever. So let me know right now, who is the better QB? Type DP for Dak Prescott or KM for Kyler Murray. Like I mentioned, this is the pinned comment on today's video, so have already head down there and get your votes if you get the ad break here on YouTube. More trade rumors. Amari Cooper to the Jags. I'll give it one star. I think a trade in general would be a little more like two stars here. Uh, specifically to Jacksonville, eh, we'll see. Bleacher Report put together trade ideas for Cooper and, and a bunch of other NFL players, and their prediction for Cooper was he goes to Jacksonville. To be clear, Cooper's future is pretty darn murky right now. It's not great. There's a big cap hit. The Jags could afford it. Here was the trade package. Two third-round picks heading to Jacksonville, in ex or from Jacksonville, in exchange for Amari Cooper. Now, that's not terrible value, but eh, you're giving up Amari. Now, receiver is one of your biggest needs. So what do you think? Would you do this trade? Type in a Y for yes, you would. N for no, you would not. Let me know what you guys have to say in the comments. I'll give my thoughts here, but first, we are still doing the BetUS jersey deal. I think it's going to end up Super Bowl week. It's not for me. It's with my bosses, but that's what the buzz I'm hearing in the office is. 125% deposit bonus when you put down at least 100 bucks and one of two Cowboys jerseys, a Dak Prescott Navy or Ezekiel Elliott in the color rush. Email us, jersey at chatsports.com if you want in on this deal. What we'll need is a bunch of, you know, your BetUS account number, your shipping address, screenshot your first bet, etc. Follow the steps. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code COWBOYS125. 100 bucks down, get you 125% deposit bonus. Then just email us, jersey at chatsports.com. If you have any questions, send us an email. It'll just, we'll give you the full list of everything that you need right away. If I, I know there's a lot of information that we're going to require. So just email us, jersey at chatsports.com. Back to Cooper. The value here of this trade is roughly a mid-second round pick. And I think that's relatively fair value. It's an early third this year, and I would bet would probably be a, a, a mid to early third again next season. It's a year later, so you devalue it. That's kind of where you're at. As I've said before, I'd rather just keep Amari. Uh, I'd restructure his deal, bring down his cap it, and try to be competitive. Of the trade offers, though, that one's not the worst. But remember, if I do trade away Amari Cooper, ah, now all of a sudden I'm, I'm in trouble because CeeDee Lamb is my only guy under contract. Gallup, Wilson, Turner, Brown, Rolf. It's not you probably re-sign a guy or two, but the receiver decisions that the Cowboys choose to make are going to be impactful this offseason. And we're going to keep you covered on everything going on around America's team throughout this offseason. So if you haven't already, you know what? Hit that big red button and subscribe or else. That's a threat for both myself and maybe for you out there. Not really, but mostly for me. Hit that big red button and sub right now. Let's talk draft briefly here since I love the NFL draft. How about Jermaine Johnson to the Dallas Cowboys? I'll give this one two stars. This, of course, is in a round one scenario. I know there's some divisiveness out there about Jermaine, depending on which Cowboys YouTuber you want to watch. All good. Everyone does great work here. I would be on board, though. Uh, Bleach Report listed Johnson as a fit for the Cowboys as one of the top senior bowl risers. If he's there at 24, I would be open to the idea. Now, your need at edge depends a lot on what you do with some of your other guys. Johnson, though, I think is a good football player. And if you're looking for a Demarcus Lawrence replacement, I actually think there's some similarities in Johnson's game to Tank Lawrence's. Johnson is a good run stopper, breakout, bit of a one-year wonder at, at FSU after transferring and, and spending some time elsewhere. Pressure rate's a little bit lower than ideal, but not terrible for a round one pick. Make no mistake about that. The production was awesome. If you have a needed edge, I, I would wonder that I, I would bet I'm going to have higher rated players on the board in round one than Johnson if he's there, but not very many. 
And if you lose Tank Lawrence and or Randy Gregory, I would not be upset if the Cowboys added Jermaine Johnson to pair with one of those guys and still, of course, utilizing Micah Pass Rusher. Although, maybe you'd just be better served taking the Kobe Dean or Devin Lloyd round one and making Parsons almost a full-time edge. So when it comes to the NFL draft, who do you guys want to take? Let me know in the comment section. Drop your, your ideal prospect or prospects for round one here in early February. Speaking of Parsons, well, some minor injury news on this front. Don't panic. Don't panic, by the way. There's nothing to be concerned about here. Uh, Parsons said in one of his recent uh, interviews that he actually hyperextended his knee against the Rams back in the preseason and that it actually lingered throughout the year because he couldn't, you know, rest it like he normally would. Um, couldn't tell on the field. <laughs> Parsons did not look limited in any capacity whatsoever by that apparent knee injury. 13 sacks, 20 tackles for loss, three forced fumbles. Parsons was balling this year. So he's fine, and if he was even just 5% limited, man, imagine what Parsons will do next year. I am excited about him. And I, by the way, just on Parsons in general, I love his answers about being upset the Cowboys lost in the postseason. I know there are several players who feel, who feel the exact same way, thankfully, but it's nice to see Parsons say it publicly. If you have not already, folks, remember to subscribe. YouTube.com slash Cowboys TV. Get all of the best Cowboys YouTube coverage every single day, all in one spot by subscribing right now.